Hello everyone, welcome back for a second paper review. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. And today we are looking at four very popular watercolor papers. I've been hearing a lot about all four of these. When I did the last review, several of you suggested these papers. So let's take a closer look. All right, the papers we are going to review today are the Gin Crafts, that's a student grade paper, the Meaden watercolor paper, the Academy watercolor paper by Baohong, that's a student grade, and then their professional grade is the artist, they just call it artist's watercolor paper. The first thing I want to point out, so these two are produced by Bao Hong, and then this one, Meaden, is, I think, a related company. Now, I've heard other artists say that they had the same suspicion. Um, I don't know that for certain, but I feel strongly that it probably is. And one of the things that makes me think that is the way that it's manufactured. So when you open these up, they all had a cover sheet, which I love that, you know, I've already taken it off, but they all had a solid color, just blank, blank piece of paper, really. And they're all designed the same way. I'll have this open where it shows you, you know, where you can separate your pages, which I just thought that was very helpful because I hate looking for that. But see, they all have that, all three of them. So, I'm pretty sure these are related companies in some way. All right. So, let's start with the Gin Craft. Now, on my other review, I immediately talked about cost, but I'm not going to do that on this one because I have a couple of things I want to talk about first, and then we can talk about the price and I think it'll make more sense that way this time. So this Gen Crafts is a student grade paper. A lot of people really like this is why I put this one in here. Now this is the only one that did not come in, um, well 10 by 7 is the size that these others came in even though those are not the sizes that I have here. That's the size we're going to use for pricing anyway, but these all came in 10 by 7. This one does not come in a 10 by 7. It only comes in 8 by 11, basically. So I took them all through the same little drill, although I personally feel that just painting on them tells you more than doing little drills like this. They're all blocks except for this one, but as you can see in here, I'll take it off. This did warp a little bit. Not too bad. I've seen worse. Meaden. I really liked Meaden. So let's take it off the block. I'm not even going to lie. One of my favorite things about the Meaden paper is it comes with this little tool. So every time you purchase a Meaden paper, you get this tool. <laughs> That's silly, but I love this thing. Now, if I were to continue using this paper, they would start stacking up pretty quickly because I think you get it every time you order a pad of paper. But I do really like this. So let's take this one off the block. Okay, that warped just a tiny bit. That one warped about the same. And I would say that's about the same. This one warped a little more because all the corners are off the table, especially over here. 
So as far as the way they feel, this one is definitely thinner. This one is a nice thick texture. That one's nice and thick. But this one is the most thick. I mean, I know they're all 140 pounds, right? They're all 140 pounds, but this one feels thicker. That obviously didn't really help it with warping less, but it does feel like a more sturdy paper. So in my testing, I saw that, you know, these papers were so, so similar. Uh, the colors were all similar. The only difference that I could find is the Gen Craft tended not to be quite as vibrant. Now, if I really put on thick pigment, then it really was comparable. But for the most part, it just tended to be just slightly lighter. And maybe that was just my technique was a little different, but I really tried to keep them the same. So, you know, I say that cautiously that the, the colors, for the most part, they're the same. But there were a few instances where maybe they weren't. Maybe. They handled the wet on wet technique really well. Every one of them did great. As you can see, they all did great with that. They did great with the ink. I used my dip pen, the dip pen, and some um, Ecoline ink, and they did equally well with that. The green swatch, so I did three swatches and then I let them completely dry. Then I took a smaller brush, got a little water on it, and just very lightly went over the top just to see how the lifting would work. And as you can see, every one of them lifted. Now, this is the reason why I say it's really better to go ahead and paint the way you paint on the paper for that to be your true test. Because see here, I would think, ooh, none of these papers are going to do well with layering when the opposite is true. They all did really well layering except for the gem craft. So that's why you really have to paint on them. So, and, and this was a little bit of a light scrub, I'd say. Now on the pink swatch, I did basically the same thing. I just took a softer brush. I took one of my little quill brushes and did the same thing across it, only with much less water and a lighter touch. So the green one had more water, the pink one had less water, just to see how much I could remove of the pigment. And as you see, they all did great. There's a little bit of a trace of water on the Gin Craft especially, but you know, I think they all did, did just fine. And since when I actually painted a painting with them, I really didn't have any trouble layering then I'm not at all concerned about this. So with the yellow and pink swatch, I was just practicing blending to see what would happen here. And I used two different techniques where, you know, first I wet the whole area and then I added some pigment. And then the other one, the larger one, I put down the pigment first and then approached it with water. And I really didn't see any trouble there either. Now on these two large swatches, I just placed down first the lighter color and then came back with the darker color and just allowed it to brush up against it just to see how they would blend that way. And the only one that really I had trouble with was the Gin Craft. And you know, it's hard to tell, maybe I had too much water in my brush. I tried to keep them all very consistent, but that's kind of hard. So that may have been the, the problem with that one. I'm not sure. It did tend to bloom 
more quickly than the others. So just to show you a few of the other things that I painted on these papers, this is the Gin Craft, and I just really did not like this. It, it, it was not layering well at all. It, it was hard to work with. So that, that's a no for me. Then on the Meaden, and the Meaden and both of the Baohong papers, they are so comparable. I really like all three of these. The Meaden, I really kind of caked on the layers just to see what would happen. I just really went all out and <laughs> got heavy and overworked these roses a bit. This is just good paper. It's nice and sturdy and I like it. I did even some little lighter wash kind of things here and just to see how that would work. And it just did great, a great paper. This is the Academy grade, right? Yep, this is the Academy, and you'll likely see this in a reel coming up soon. If it's not already out, it's coming up soon. Uh, this did really well. I, I love this paper. And then this is the professional version. Again, I really put a lot on these roses just to see if I could get movement from layers. This is actually about four different layers, and it, it did fine. What I love about the professional version is the grain. I really, really, really love the texture. I love this look here, and I did not have to try very hard to get it. You know, in a lot of other papers, when you want it to do this, you have to use a very dry brush, or a pretty dry brush. Here, I, I found that I could do it very easily whenever I wanted to, but yet I could I could keep it from happening when I wanted to as well. It was just very easy to work with. This one is the more expensive one, of course, which we're about to talk about, but this one, the professional Baohong, comes in a rough texture. So it's probably really rough because this one's a really nice texture. So the rough, I'm excited to try. With rough paper, it can be hard to work with, but on the right applications, it's a lot of fun. I love the way it looks. So next I'll be buying the rough texture and see what that's like. Okay, for price, let's look at this. They're all 100% cotton paper, 140 pounds, cold pressed, and they all come in 20 sheets. So they're all basically 10 by seven, except for the Gen Craft. Here are the costs for each one. Because they're not all the same size, and these are not all the sizes that I particularly have, so I did look up the prices for the 10 by seven, since that's the size that they, three of them at least, had in common. So the cost per sheet, as you can see there, pretty low. This, so in order to compare apples to apples because of the size difference, then I took it in <laughs> square inches per sheet. Go ahead, you can, you can laugh at me. <laughs> and then I broke it down into the cost per square inch, just so that we are getting a, a correct comparison here. I used to be an accountant, so I just, I can't help it. So for the mean, it was basically one penny per square inch for this paper, or 85 cents per sheet. For Gen Craft, the cost was also a penny, but because of the size, the cost per sheet was a dollar, basically a dollar 20. Then the two Baohong that to me are just neck and neck with the Meaden as far as quality goes, except the Meaden has some size, doesn't come in as many sizes. The Academy was 94, basically 95 cents a sheet, which broke down to a penny per square inch. And then the artist grade is almost two pennies, not quite two pennies, which is $1.35 per sheet. So what do I think, right? Well, 
Like I said, I'm not crazy about gin craft, so we'll put that aside. But the other three are all so similar that you can't go wrong with any of those three. For me, I love the, the texture of the professional version of Baohong. So, and it's 30 cents or so cheaper than the 100% cotton of Saunders that I'm using. So I think I'm probably going to go with the professional version of Baohong because it feels a little thicker and I love that texture. It does have more texture than the Academy version. I think I'm probably going to spend the little bit extra and get the texture. Now, when I decide that I'm tired of that texture, then I'll go with the Academy and not think twice about it because they're both really good. Or the Meaden, any of those three. I'm very, very happy with those. Well, as always, I hope that was helpful information for you. If you've tried these papers, leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you agree or disagree with the things that I said? Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know that you enjoyed it. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I have a lot more really great watercolor videos coming up real soon. Thanks again. I hope to see you next week.